Keto. This is my very first uh, Facebook video and you get to be my guest. Today we're going to talk about the ketogenic way of eating and um, just what that is and how would you get started on it. Um, my name's Gayla, GG, and I am the owner and administrator for uh, Keto Recipes for Beginners Facebook group as well as the uh, website full of recipes and articles to uh, help you on your journey. So where do we start and what do you eat? I'm going to get with you uh, on that in just one minute. But for right now, let me know where you're coming from. Um, if you wouldn't mind commenting below, I would love to know what part of the world you are. Uh, let me know if you are brand new or if you are a uh, um, if you've been on this way of eating for a little while. So what should you eat and how do you get started? The ketogenic diet is a really not a diet at all. It's a way of eating that uh, allows your body to take its fuel from fat and fat stores as opposed to sugar and glucose. So I learned about this. Uh, I started out on the Whole30. Uh, I read the Whole30 book and uh, it was a wonderful read. And it got started me eating nice and clean and got the sugar out of my system. And um, shortly after that, I just, it morphed into this when I discovered just how sensitive my body was to the carbohydrates. So I read several books. Um, one uh, that I particularly liked was by uh, Gary Tobbs and uh, another one by Jimmy Moore, Keto Clarity. Uh, Gary Tobbs put one out that says, why do we get fat and what do we do about it? Um, Keto Clarity is a really quick, easy read about a guy that's lost a couple of hundred pounds. Um, they give you a lot of wisdom and they give you knowledge into just how your body is working and what is going on with all these changes. We've been told all of our lives that if we eat low carb or if we eat low fat or if we eat low calories that we're going to lose weight because deprivation is how you lose weight and we all know that hasn't worked. So we might lose it temporarily and then we gain it right back. So. I came to the conclusion that I began thinking something was wrong with me. So um, that's how I got to where I am now. I've been keto since February and uh, I've lost uh, almost 50 pounds um, and I'm still, I've still got a ways to go. But I want to share with you what I've learned. So uh, what are ketones and what is ketosis? When your body doesn't have enough sugar or enough glucose to fuel itself, it starts looking for other avenues of fuel. Its preferred fuel is fat. I know that's not what the public has told us all these years, but it is fat. Fat fuels the brain, fat fuels the uh, muscles. It uh, gives you more energy than you can ever imagine having. And most importantly for me, the head chatter has gone. I no longer think about food 24 hours a day and what do I get to have next. I know last Thanksgiving even, after a huge Thanksgiving meal with five pies on my kitchen counters, um, I just wondered when, when I would not be so full and not hurt so bad that I could have another piece of pie. Uh, that I found was not because I was hungry. That was because the carbohydrates were stimulating the hormones in my body to tell me that you want more. You want more, you want more. It's a sugar addiction. So the first thing you have to do in the ketogenic way of eating is to break the sugar addiction. So what does that mean? What, what do we do? Okay, well, what I just said a few minutes ago was when your body doesn't have enough glucose, to fuel itself, it starts looking for other fuel. So first thing we have to do is deprive our body of that glucose. Now, this is the initial part of going ketosis. This we're talking, some people it takes days, some people it takes up to maybe three weeks, depending on how damaged your hormone system is and how much um, 
dieting you've done in your past and how broken your metabolism is. So for this first week, you're basically coming out of a sugar addiction. And that sugar addiction is like any other kind of addiction. It's not going to be comfortable. So you need to take some steps and you need to take care of you and you need to prepare so that um, you can give yourself as much love as you can possibly give you this first week. Uh, the first thing we need to do is start reading uh, ingredients because you're going to be shocked to find that sugar is in almost everything that's in a box or a can or a package or a bottle. Um, there's, there's sugar in obvious things like uh, high carbohydrate foods, cereals, crackers, bread, pasta, um, chips, potatoes, um, foods that are high starch content, those are carbs and, and we know that. But did you think that Lowry seasoning salt would have sugar? Um, did you think that, um, oh goodness, I can't even, cough syrup? Did you know that they put sugar in your cough syrup? Anyway, you have to start reading ingredients and you start finding out and eliminating where sugar is coming in. Now, another video, another time, I'm going to tell you about sugar because they've given it about 250 names um, so that you can't recognize it. So most of them end in like an OSE, so you can recognize them even if you don't know what the words are. But for now, let's look for the main ones, which would be uh, sucrose and sugar and brown sugar and fructose and corn syrup and uh, modified food starch. Um, and we start purging. So, so if you can't eat, all those packages of things that you've been eating, what are you going to eat? What do you buy at the store to prepare for this? <laughs> Here's the good news. Meat, cheese, sour cream, cream cheese, butter. And I'll tell you, there's a big difference between butter in a box and well, there, there's, a, there's a kind of butter that I'm particularly fond of, and that's called Kerrygold, and it's grass-fed. And I get it at Aldi's, and it's way cheaper than if I get it at a regular grocery store. But um, grass-fed butter, Kerrygold butter, has a flavor that is out of this world. I could eat it right out of the container. I slice it off. But um, you don't have to do that. You're not used to the fat, so not to worry. Um, so anyway, what do we, why did that do that? Oh, I, I lost my video. I'm not really sure what happened. I lost my video. Anyway, I'm back. Um, so the first things first, you're going to get rid of the sugar and you're going to start making yourself some steaks and some pork chops and some eggs and some bacon and some full fat cheeses. And you're going to eat lots and lots of protein and fat for at least a week or two. You're going to eat until you're full. You're going to eat until you're satisfied. If you get hungry later, you're going to eat some more. And you're not going to worry about counting and you're not going to worry about carbs and you're not, or you're not going to worry about, excuse me, you are worrying about carbs. You're not going to worry about fats or calories because right now, as you begin, your body's little cells have got receptors in them that are like, well, you can, I kind of picture them like, um, like little doorways. And the little doorways, the hinges have become broken because of all the insulin that has been bombarding you uh, with all of the garbage that you've been eating for who knows how many years. Me? Oh, at least 50 years. So my little receptors for the insulin is broken, which means that I've become very insulin resistant. So that means my body won't even let insulin in to bring the blood sugar down. So when I started going keto and I started eating fats and proteins, the first thing that happens is your body starts screaming because you're not giving it sugar. 
And how does it scream? It screams by flushing all that water out of your cells when it's trying to release all that fuel that's been stored, the glucose. And in doing that, it flushes your electrolytes. What's an electrolyte? Well, we've got potassium, magnesium, and salt. Those are the three main ones that we're focusing on. And these are not optional. These are the little guys in your bodies that regulate your hormones. And if you don't feed them, and if you don't love on them, you're gonna feel sick. They call it the keto flu. The keto flu, you get muscle cramps, you get nausea, you're tired, you don't even wanna get out of bed. You just feel bleh. So what do you do about that? You eat salt, you put salt on your food, you eat grass-fed butter with salt in it, you eat, uh, you get you some magnesium citrate and you take that as a supplement. You uh, can take a potassium supplement or eat vegetables that have potassium in them, like your dark green leafies and stuff like that. Um, but remember for these two weeks, you're not following the rules of the regular keto diet. For the first two weeks, all you're doing is converting your body from sugar burning to fat fueling. Now, so many people have asked me about these ketone pea sticks. The ketone pea sticks is a cheap way to find out if you're making ketones. What does that mean? That means that your blood is now got ketones in it because the glucose stores are gone. So when your glucose stores are gone and your body starts looking for those lipids, those fats to to fuel itself, it starts bringing in the ketones, but you can't use them yet because those little receptors are broke. So it has to repair its receptors, which your body is such a fabulous body. It's such a fabulous system because everything will repair itself. Some takes longer than others. I think they said a liver can completely regenerate itself, but it'll take five years to do it. But it will regenerate itself. So just like that, the receptors in your cells, your mitochondria, uh, will also repair themselves. Um, but during this time, you will be not using the ketones for fuel very much. I mean, a little bit here and there, but not very much until those little receptors get healed. That's why you're going to feel tired, and that's why you're going to feel achy and what have you. And so you feed those electrolytes helps stabilize your hormones, which repairs those little receptors into fat fueling even quicker. So feed your electrolytes, feed your body, get lots and lots of good rest, allow yourself to take a nap if you want, allow yourself to overeat if you want. Fats and proteins only, no carbs, no carbs. Calculate your carbs, count your carbs. Um, I suggest that while you're getting started that you go on the computer and you look at the apps to track your food. There are, oh, there's a dozen of them out there. The, some of the most, um, uh, the most frequently used ones would be MyFitnessPal. There's a free version and a pay version. The uh, pay versions, I think only about two or three dollars. But anyway, there's a free version and a pay version. There is something called Simply Stupid Keto. Uh, I have a girlfriend that really loves that one. Um, there are so many tracking apps out there. What you're looking for is what's simple for you, whether you use a phone, whether you use a computer, you know, it's all, it's up to you. Find, find an app that you like and download it onto your phone or your computer and play with it. Start writing in what meats you're eating and what fats you're eating and figure out a way to look up your foods and how to figure out how much you're eating in a day's time. I would imagine to get started, you're gonna be eating somewhere between 50 and 100 grams of protein and somewhere between 100 and 150 grams of fat. Um, Carbohydrates, you keep under 20 total grams. The only exception to that rule, in my way of thinking, 
would be avocados. Avocados are like 12 carbs for one avocado, but oh my goodness, they're, they're such a heaven sent food. They are so good for you and so healthy for you. Um, and they've got something like 10 grams of fiber. Well, I'm sure you've heard of net carbs. This is one of the few exceptions that I go along with net carbs. Um, you take the total amount of carbs and you subtract the total amount of fiber. And that gives you the leftover carbohydrates that are going to actually be processed in your body. If you, um, if you read up on fiber, there's most types of fiber, most people, there's exceptions to every rule, but most people do not digest fiber. It just passes right through the body. That's why they say it's such a, uh, a good thing to have to help you have a good BM is because the fiber pushes it through. Well, you're going to find you don't need fiber like you did when you were eating carbohydrates, uh, eating this way, because the, the fat helps that stuff slide right on out without too much trouble. But for an avocado, if you count your net carbs, that's only like two carbs for a whole avocado. And most people eat at least a half an avocado a day if you, if you love them. If you, if you really love them, a whole avocado a day. And I usually put some sour cream on mine with a little salt and pepper, and I just don't think it gets any better than that. But your choice. You know, you can make guacamole. Who, who knows? Eat them with pork rinds. Pork rinds are pure fat. Um, oh, not really. They're, they've got some protein in them, too. So you have to watch your protein. This way of eating is high fat, moderate protein, and very low carb. It's not the Atkins diet. It's not eat protein to your heart's consent. You, you really have to track your protein, but not while you're converting. So we're going to do this. We're going to do another video. Uh, probably we're going to start doing this weekly. And we will progress and get you started. But for right now, we need to break that sugar addiction. We're going to get the carbohydrates out of your body. We're going to eat lots of fat and lots of protein, and we're going to drink water, and we're going to find you some supplements so that you can take some magnesium and some potassium and salt, and, and don't eat that white iodized salt. That, that white stuff has probably got one nutrient in it for a whole teaspoon, but if you get some sea salt or pink sea salt, even better, there's like 25 nutrients in a teaspoon. So don't waste your salt by eating that white crap that they've, sorry, that white stuff that they've got there at the grocery stores. They've got pink Himalayan sea salt at the grocery stores too. And you can get it on Amazon. Um, what I did to make it easier for me, I mean, I know some people that like to just lick their hand and uh, eat salt all day long, but I prefer taking it in capsules. So you can either pour salt into your own little plastic, you know, gel caps um, or those little uh, refillable capsules that you can get, or you can just buy a baggie full of already loaded salt capsules. And um, you have to break them up a little bit when you're not used to taking in salt like that. You don't want to get nauseous. So you take like one and then one another two or three hours and then one another two or three hours or two at a time if you build up to it and keep that salt in your body while your body's converting. Um, that will save you more pain and effort than probably anything else you do. Keep your salt up. Feeding your electrolytes is not an option. Purge the sugar, eat fat and protein, bulk up on your electrolytes, and that'll be your first two weeks of keto. Um, I'm going to be back for another video next week. I hope you can join me. See you then. Bye.